Hi friends, now let us learn about the brachial plexus. What are brachial plexus? Brachial plexus are the plexus or uh, plexus which are formed by the nerves. These plexus are formed by the nerves of anterior or ventral rami mainly. Ventral rami of lower four cervical nerves. There are four cervical, lower four cervical nerves. The so cervical nerves, the system starts from C1 to C8. So it is formed by lower four, that means C. I'm not, let me draw the black, okay? C5, C6, C7, C8. Okay? All these four form plexus. Plexus is nothing but a combinations in different combinations. So this brachial plexus consists of mainly four components. That is roots, trunks, divisions and cords. There are four branches. That is roots, trunks, divisions and cords. All these are formed from the brachial plexus. I mean this brachial plexus forms these four divisions. So now from the root C. This is C5 root, C6, C7, C8. This C5, this gives a root. C6 gives a root, C7 gives a root and C8 gives a root. And even T1, lower 4 cervical nerves and 1 thoracic nerve. Okay, so now T1 gives a root. Okay, now these roots combine to form trunk. How do they combine is? C5 root and C6 root combine to form upper trunk. So this is upper trunk. And this C7 continues to form middle trunk. And this C8 combines with T1 to form the lower trunk. So this is lower trunk. Okay. Upper trunk is formed by the combination of roots of C5, C6. And middle trunk is formed by the combination of C7 roots. And lower trunk is formed by the combination of C8 and T1. And each trunk is divided into two divisions. Anterior and posterior. So let me draw you. So this, these are the trunks you can see here. So now trunks are divided into divisions. Anterior division is this one. And posterior I am drawing down. This is posterior. Now this is anterior division of middle trunk and this is posterior division of middle trunk. For the lower trunk I am drawing it reverse just for convenience purpose. Posterior and this is anterior in order to avoid the zigzag pattern. Okay. So this is the divisions. Each trunk is divided into anterior and posterior division. So you see upper trunk is divided into anterior division, posterior division. Middle trunk is divided into anterior division, posterior division. Lower trunk is divided into anterior division and posterior division. So now all the posterior divisions are combined together to form cord. That is posterior cord. See all the posterior divisions are combined. See this is the com combination of both, all the three posterior divisions occurs. And these are combined to form a posterior cord. This is posterior cord. Okay. The first and second, that is the upper and middle trunk anterior division, that is anterior divisions of upper and middle trunk combine to form, see these two combine to form lateral cord. So this is Lateral cord. Okay. So the trunk of, I mean the mm, divisions of, anterior divisions of upper and middle trunk combine to form the lateral cord. And the anterior division of the lower trunk combines, I mean continues to form the medial cord. Okay. All these are cords. So these are roots. These are trunk. This is division. These are cords. 
She got it roots, trunks, deep shells and cords. Okay. Now the branches coming from each of them. So now let's see from roots. From roots I am drawing with blue. From C5 there will be dorsal scapular nerve. Dorsal scapular nerve from C5. And from C5, C6 and C7 there will be long thoracic nerve. Okay, all these two are the branches from the roots. From the roots, you will be getting two branches, dorsal scapular nerve from C5. And from C5, C6, C7, there will be long thoracic nerve. And from the trunks, from the trunks, you will be having only two branches, this one. That is, suprascapular nerve, not subscapular, it's supra, suprascapular nerve. And nerve to subclavius, this is subclavius. This is supra scapular. So, from the upper cord, upper upper trunk, you will be having two, two, what do we say, branches. One is supra scapular nerve and the other is nerve to subclavius. See, supra scapular and nerve to subclavius. This is from the trunk. And then, from the lateral cord. Lateral cord is lateral pectoral nerve. Lateral pectoral nerve from the lateral cord, and then it continues as musculo cutaneous nerve. It continues as musculo cutaneous nerve, and it gives a branch that is lateral root of median nerve. Lateral root of median nerve. What does this lateral root of median nerve do next? I will be showing it next, okay. This is lateral root of median nerve. Okay, all these are lateral branches. What are the lateral branch? Lateral branches from the lateral cord. One is lateral pectoral nerve. Continuation is muscular cutaneous nerve. And lateral root of median nerve, okay. And now, from the posterior cord. Posterior cord is upper scapular nerve. Okay, what is it? The main, what do we say, mnemonic is U ulna, ul ultra. Ultra is upper subscapular nerve. This is subscapular. Upper subscapular nerve. Next, thoracodorsal nerve. Thoracodorsal nerve. And lower subscapular nerve. So there are three nerves mainly. Upper subscapular nerve, thoracodorsal nerve, and lower subscapular nerve. UL, UT, that means ULT, ultra. RA is remaining. So a branch is axillary nerve and, cont and, and continuous as radial nerve. So this one. You got it first. In the posterior cord there are mainly five branches that is one continuation and four branches. So upper sc subscapular nerve, thoracodors thoracodorsal nerve or nerve to latissimus dorsi and lower subscapular nerve and axillary nerve and radial nerve. Okay, all these are branches from the from the posterior cord, and then branches from the medial cord. See all M's. One is medial pectoral nerve. Next, medial cutaneous nerve of arm. Next, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm. Next, continuation is ulnar nerve. And then, medial root of median nerve. This combines with the lateral root of median nerve from the lateral cord. And it forms the median nerve. Got it? From the medial cord, there will be median pectoral nerve, medial cutaneous nerve of arm, medial cutaneous nerve of forearm, and continuation is ulnar nerve. And a branch that is median root of medial nerve. So median root combines with the lateral root of from the lateral cord to form the median nerve. So this is the brachial plexus. So if you come to the clinical aspects of brachial plexus, this is the clinical aspect. This is herb's point. Herb's point is the meeting point of six nerves. See, this is C5 root, C6 root. Suprascapular nerve, nerve to subclavius, 
anterior division of upper cord posterior division of upper cord so totally six nerves are meeting at this point so this is what is it herb's point herb's point is the meeting point of six nerves that is c5 root c6 root suprascapular nerve nerve to subclavius anterior cord i mean anterior division of upper cord and posterior division of upper cord so all this gives the herb's point so paralysis of this herb's point then all the nerve, all the muscles which are supplied by these nerves are lost that means the total lateral cord is lost a part of lateral cord not total but a part of lateral cord is lost and this results in many disorders mainly the flexion of elbow what happens is there will there will be loss of extension of elbow and pronation of forearm all this you will be learning when you complete all the upper limb then you can understand these and then clumpex paralysis is the other thing clumpex paralysis is due to the injury of c6 and t8 t1 c6 and t1 if the, here there is an injury then it leads to clump keys paralysis so all this comes under brachial plexus okay then hey 